Mayor Lucas Cleveland just happened to get you at the train just station. Happened. They uh, tell me about uh, coming from Montreal. Well, listen, Pete, uh, it is Friday after five o'clock, but I'm happy to do a little quick interview. Thanks for being here and catching me off the train. Uh, I'm coming from Montreal uh, at the Great Lakes St. Lawrence Initiative. Um, why was I there? Well, actually, the Great Lakes St. Lawrence Mayor's Initiative has a long history in Coburg. It goes all the way back to Mayor Delante back in, I believe, 2008. Uh, this organization's only been around since about 2003. Um, my predecessor, Mr. Henderson, told me that this is a really quickly growing organization. And then our, our local MP, uh, Philip Lawrence, pointed out that this is a great organization to get involved with, and so I did. And uh, they weren't wrong. In the last year, $1.7 billion has been contributed by the Biden administration and matched by our federal government uh, towards coastline revitalization, developing the blue-green economy, and uh, working towards water equity. This is all of the things we want in Coburg, and this is a great opportunity for Coburg to really connect with various members across the Great Lakes, mayors of Chicago and Milwaukee, mayors of uh, Montreal and Toronto, all focusing on developing the economy, protecting the environment. And when you actually look at the economic impact of this great organization, I learned a really incredible stat. If you take the GDP of all of the economies on the Great Lakes, they're the third largest GDP in the world behind the US and China. So it's actually a massive economic group that has a lot of vital interests, not only environmental protection, but also developing our seaways, developing our waterways. At present, we only have about 40% capacity on the lakes. What an opportunity to get traffic off our roads, onto ships across the lakes. We're looking at hovercraft development. Uh, we're looking at within two years, hovercraft farriers working uh, towards St. Catharines. So huge opportunities, and most importantly, huge opportunities to get funding to come towards Coburg. We do have some great news based on some funding I'm looking forward to announce um, in due course. And uh, yeah, so that's why I was there, Pete. How does it, does it, will it be well utilized? In other words, you know, will, will we get this? Is this long term? Are we talking 5, 10, 15, 20, or is it? I think your question is really uh, poignant. I think. I see a lot of the similar questions when people are asking, well, what's the purpose of going to Queen's Park? What's the purpose of going to Ottawa? Why are you going to all of these different events and working uh, to try and build brand recognition of Coburg and to connect, and it, what's the value there? It's a great question. I promised when I ran that I was gonna work to do three things, accountability and transparency. I promised everyone I was gonna make mistakes to try and move towards progress. And I said I was gonna work to build teams because as a lower tier municipality, we need teams to be able to accomplish and do the high level work that we want to do in this community. We can't keep looking to our tax base to fund all of our infrastructure, our growth, as well as uh, all of our wants and needs. So what this council and I have done is taken a different approach uh, to advocate for our community abroad and to look for partnerships at various levels of government and with various agencies it's through teamwork and collaboration and finding partners that have a vested interest that aligns with the residents of Coburg to work together with. Um, it's been difficult locally sometimes. Nope, actually, you know what? We're going to stick on the positive in this interview, and that's what we're going to do today. So today we're going to focus on the positive. We're going to say this is how we build teams. This is how we bring attention to our, our, our community, and it's how we find funding opportunities. Because I'd rather be in a position to have more revenue coming in from outside sources than have to start looking at cuts in the future uh, to services for our residents to maintain uh, a balanced budget. You've been on a whirlwind trip from Toronto to Montreal. Uh, saw a picture a little while ago of you uh, with the Premier and with MPP Puccini. Uh, yeah, so that was a few weeks ago. Uh, as I said, there's been a concentrated effort recently to really reach outside of the uh, Northumberland envelope to find teammates, whether that's at the federal level by going to Ottawa or by working with our local MPP, Minister Puccini, to get to Queen's Park and meet with the Premier and a variety of other provincial ministers. Um, it was a real honour uh, and an opportunity to get there. Um, I mean, this doesn't happen because of the efforts of me. This happens because of the efforts of a team. That team includes Coburg Council supporting some of the ideas and different approaches. It happens because I've got a Coburg staff who are ensuring that I and Council are prepared, 
on point and ready to advocate in these meetings. And it happens because we've got incredible support at the MPP and the MP level looking out to work for and with Coburg by opening up doors so that people like myself, my deputy mayor and our council members can have the conversations we need to, to get the money to start coming to our community. Can you talk about anything that you spoke with about the premier or is that sort of hush hush? Oh, yeah, no, I mean, I'm happy to sort of share some general details. I, I don't feel comfortable necessarily sharing what the premier said to me, but I'm happy to say what I, what I shared with, which is I went to the premier and I talked about the issues in Coburg. I talked about safety and security issues for our residents, including our unhoused residents. I, I talked to the Premier about some major projects that we have on the go right now and some funding opportunities that we've asked for help from from the province to highlight them. Uh, we talked about representation. We talked about uh, approaches to solving some of the major issues in our community. We talked about planning and how Coburg is doing uh, what we can to maintain and hit those provincial priorities of housing. Uh, the provincial priority of economic growth and the provincial priority of transportation. Three things that this council in just the last 18 months has put a lot of time and effort to and I wanted to showcase those wins to the Premier uh, as a way of saying, hey look, our community is doing what was asked of us and we're looking for support like investment into our infrastructure to facilitate that growth. If I didn't ask the word or if I didn't say the word, I'd be chastised but you, you beat around the bush with it but what about the Brookside. Oh, I'm not being around the bush. Of course, Brookside came up. Uh, it's a conversation. It is a ever evolving situation. Uh, it's one that both the province and Coburg are working collaboratively to, sol to solve. Uh, and it's one that uh, we really sort of, we talked about the, how to move forward. And the reality is, as Pete, I've said it before and I'll say it again. In Northumberland County, there is one level of government that is responsible for social service delivery. In Northumberland County, there is one level of government that is responsible for affordable housing. That level of government is Northumberland County. And so as the mayor of Coburg in this meeting, and as the premier of Ontario, a lower township met with an upper tier to talk about what we as a lower tier can do. And that's not deliver social services, but there are other things that we can do as a lower tier, like we're doing with our CIP grant, the way we're looking out for our most vulnerable, the ECE uh, bylaw. And so it's about having that conversation about what's going on in our community to bring awareness to those at higher levels. If I say it, do you think the county is doing enough? It's an awkward question, Pete, because how do I answer that question? Um, I think it's appropriate to say that we can always be doing better. And I think it's also appropriate that we have to recognize that I wear two hats, Pete. I wear the Mayor of Coburg hat, and I also wear a County Councillor hat. And so um, I always believe that there can be a better job done. Uh, I think that we're always looking for partnerships as a lower tier municipality with our upper tier. And I do think uh, that we need to start looking for solutions and encampment responses and not keep uh, suggesting that there is a one-stop solution. We need to really, really focus on getting our most vulnerable uh, the care that they deserve. All in all, you've had a busy, I guess, two or three weeks. And a busy couple of weeks for sure. But the uh, positive things out of both meetings. Can't, uh, again, sometimes uh, it's about being in the right room. Sometimes it's about being in the right environment and making those right connections. Uh, at this conference, as an example, there was an opportunity to speak with upwards of almost 12 different uh, federal ministers from different uh, portfolios. Uh, the connections between variety of mayors, learning what's happening in Chicago uh, to, say, Port Douglas, you know, communities of 2.6 million all the way down to uh, 4,000, seeing what's working in theirs, the faces and the struggles. It also great, gives me great perspective so that when I come back to our community, I come back with a positive outlook because I realize how fortunate we are in this community to be facing the problems we're facing. Yes, we have them, but when you look at sort of the bigger picture and take a bit of a 360 or a bird's eye view, uh, you realize, wow, I'm really proud that these are the problems we're having to work on and not facing the ones that some of our other communities are. Last question, because I know it's a holiday weekend. They, uh, is it sort of nice from outside looking in from what you're saying, 
is it kind of nice to see that other people are having the same problems? Like, you know, like you're not alone. I wouldn't say it's nice to see it because what it shows is that as a, as a country and as a, uh, as a nation across North America, there is a unprecedented number of similar problems. So I wouldn't say it doesn't make me happy. It does uh, give me confidence. And as I said, perspective, confidence in the sense that it's not just Coburg who's trying to think outside the box and solve this problem. There are literally thousands of municipalities who are all working to try and find solutions. And I also think it's important to remember that progress always is happening. And sometimes we don't see the progress day to day, um, but we'll see it over the course of a period of say months or a year. And so, yeah, I, I, I do gain a lot of sort of empathy, understanding and perspective in these events. Thank you for your time. Thanks for catching me uh, at the train station, Pete. <laughs>